Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now when Intel launched their Arc GPUs, some people including myself were concerned about the speed in which much needed driver updates would be released. It's safe to say however that Intel have shown serious dedication and consistency towards improving various aspects of these cards. I like to think of myself as an early adopter of the Arc A750 here and during the course of my ownership I've seen improvements not only to modern DX12 titles but older DX9 releases too. The latest driver at the time of this video, the version ending in .4644, aims to increase the frame rates of certain DX11 games. I decided to test a few games that Intel themselves have tested and specified as well as a few others in DX11 mode to see if the frame rate increases extend beyond their list and if so by how much since the original RK750 driver. I've tested the card with my i5 12400F and 32 gigs of DDR4 in dual channel, clocked at 3200 MHz. To start with then we have Apex at 1080p with the highest settings and spot shadows off. 1080p has been used throughout this video. With the launch driver version 3490 the average came back at 110 with a 1% low of 71 and a 0.1% low of 34. I do seem to remember having some issues way back when I first got this card and this game, especially with the consistency of this one. The latest driver improves our frame rate by 15 FPS, but the consistency as represented by those percentile lows has also been improved. In GTA 5, with the highest settings, the advanced graphics set to their maximum and FXAA, well, there is a massive difference here. With the launch driver, version 3490, the game was averaging 67 FPS with a few issues here and there to say the least. However, with the latest driver release, we're seeing a 97 FPS average now with a 1% low of 63 and a 0.1% low of 55. So massive improvements across the board. This is another one where I distinctly remember having some serious issues and the game has gone from being quite problematic to actually not only playable but enjoyable. We were already seeing pretty decent frame rates and acceptable frame times for Valorant at the highest settings with FXAA, but again the latest driver has improved the average, taking it closer to 300 FPS. The 1% low and the 0.1% low for that matter have also been improved, which is ideal if you're playing on a higher refresh rate monitor, everything is a lot more consistent now. The next three games will have DX12 support, but I stuck with DX11 to once again highlight any differences between the launch and the latest driver. First up then we have The Witcher 3 Next Gen in DX11 mode with the Ultra Preset HBAO Plus and SSR Low with TAAU. This was clearly broken with uh, Intel's launch driver here, hitting just 51 FPS uh, with some horrendous percentile lows, 27 and 4 respectively. With the latest driver, things are certainly fixed. I'd still recommend playing in DX12 where possible because this is where the RK750 is at its best, but 97 FPS on average now, and as you can see by the frame times, the consistency is there. We're not stuttering our way through busy towns like we were beforehand. When it comes to Fortnite, the average improvement isn't, well, it's, it's non-existent really, but where the game has improved, or where the drivers have improved the game, is with the percentile lows. Once again, I'd recommend playing in DX12, but in DX11 mode, our percentile lows have improved, and it is more consistent. There are still a few dips and drops here and there, but it's a lot better this time around. Finally, we have one of my favorites, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with the highest preset and TAA. Again, not much in the way of an improvement to the average, although four FPS is certainly nothing to ignore, but it's with those one and 0.1% lows where things have once again been improved. And the game now feels a lot more consistent on the A750. As you know, I like to follow the progress of these Intel art cards, the A750 in particular, because I've owned it for a while now and I've definitely seen some pretty big improvements with DX12, DX9 and now DX11 games over the last year. But if you enjoyed this one or you found it helpful, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one. Thank you for watching.